I have your cow. Oh, thank you. It's very comfortable. Yes. I tried to match the. <laughs> You did change, right? Yeah. Yes. I didn't know what I was going to wear. I'm like, ah, yeah. I got this t-shirt from a friend of mine. She yeah. lives in Baltimore, so she brought it for me. When she really came cool. to SA. I love your ring as well. Thank you. I saw your mom's function. It looked... Which one? The, the pictures. You guys look like you were having so much fun. I think it was over December. Or... The Which pictures one? On, on Facebook. It was, it was it not your mum's function? Like a, I don't know if it was a birthday or something. It was it was in twenty nineteen though. Ish, because yeah. it's been that long since we last. Yeah. We last saw each other at twenty eighteen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Let's not be ready for us. Wait, all oh, this thing is falling. What has? Yes, no, what you call this? Oh, the mic. Mm -hmm. So I must say, you actually schooled me. And I had to go do some research after your, your story. Come in. Okay. Hi. So it's, I just made sure that everything is okay. okay so whenever you guys are ready. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Lily, thank you so much for joining me on the couch today. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for contributing to those who travel meet themselves. Um, thank I, you for inviting me to contribute. Yes. Uh, I think your story is phenomenal. And I just, I love who you are. So it's so important to get different stories so that it gives perspective. It's not just one, one perspective. Mm -hmm. Because what I found with your story was that I ended up uh, researching quite a few things. So I'd just like you to introduce yourself to everyone, like who's Bully mm -hmm. and what makes you tick? Wow, gosh. <laughs> um, I'm Bully, um, Suwane, I was born and bred, partly bred in mm -hmm. Soweto, and then I uh, was raised in PE mm -hmm. uh, because my dad is Kosa, mm -hmm. and there wasn't much Kosa spoken in Soweto, mm -hmm. and his thing was like, uh -uh, I don't want my child not to learn her language, mm -hmm. so he sent me to PE to live with um his friends mm -hmm. who had children but didn't have a little girl mm -hmm. so i became their baby so mm -hmm. i have a very interesting upbringing in that i have two sets of parents yes who brought me up differently mm -hmm. and yeah and yeah um and that's that's how i got to go to pe and then um and then when my dad passed away, mm -hmm. I came back to Johannesburg to come and live now with my mom permanently. And uh, I went, yeah, basically I'm also a mother. My daughter lives, is an artist, um, professional. It's not fine art because she doesn't do fine art, but she is trained in fine arts. Mm -hmm. She lives in Amsterdam. Um, because they moved from South Africa to Amsterdam. Yeah. And that's basically who I am. Oh, also I'm an entrepreneur. Yes, yeah, so what kind of entrepreneurship are you in? Oh, okay, so um, I've got two businesses right now that I'm running mm -hmm. uh, with 
I've got a business, I have a business partner and we do uh, transaction advisory and mm -hmm. that, is, that involves um, finding money mm -hmm. for people who want to do large scale projects. Okay. So that's yeah, funding is always a huge issue. Yeah. And, ugh, oh gosh. Yeah. It, mm. take, yeah, it is quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I also do a, I do local tours. Mm -hmm. In and around, uh, okay. in, and around, in and around Johannesburg and Pretoria. I didn't know that. Now you know. I really didn't know that. And what I, kind of local tours do I you do? I came. That happened by mistake, <laughs> as well. The best things always happen by mistake. <laughs> yeah. So I was. Um, I left. No, I'm not really left. I, my last permanent job or was at um at a broadcaster the national broadcaster mm -hmm. and when i left that i joined corporate briefly on uh short term contracts and yes. it's my life as a fully employed person ended in 2014. yeah so in 2015 between 2015 and 2016 i was like seriously looking for a job mm -hmm. but uh and amazingly, a person with so much experience because I had over 20 years experience in PR and marketing mm -hmm. and I just couldn't get a job. Mm -hmm. and, and I kept on getting people coming to South Africa from all being referred, like my cousins would refer mm -hmm. people because they live in, one cousin lived in Thailand and mm -hmm. she said, oh, friends of mine are coming to South Africa mm -hmm. to join us, but can you take them around? Yes. And that's how it kind of happened. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm like... Because then after the after doing taking people through mm -hmm. and showing them my so it was from my yes, eyes, eyes yeah, yeah. They're like they would pay me I'm like no yeah. no I, no so eventually after doing like it's like a couple of times yes one well, of I my friends I'm... my friend one of my friends said to me why don't you just do this thing permanently mm -hmm. because clearly. You are getting more and more, you are getting traction, mm -hmm. you are getting, um, now it's like, it's what you are meant to mm -hmm. do. And that's what I learned, it's like, you know, life can throw you yes. a curveball. Yeah. And, um, and a lifeline. Yeah, and, yes, and a All lifeline. in one. Yeah, yeah. Because here I was, I was looking for a job. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that my time to be fully employed yeah. had ended. Yes. And it was time for me to do something different. Yeah. And um, that's how it happened. It's rather amazing. I mean, it's 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 interesting that it's so difficult, and, and and it's often hard for people to turn something that they view as something they do naturally into a form of employment for themselves. Mm -hmm. So we we almost put barriers, and I mean, yours you. You're turning 50, you said, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that means you were born in 1970. Mm -hmm. So you would have been six in 1976. Mm -hmm. I was six. Yeah. Yeah. So were you still in Soweto then? Or? No, I was in PE. Yes. So. Because you, mm -hmm. you refer to that as well in the book mm -hmm. when you guys were going on your trip. Mm -hmm. So you also have like this, with being... 50, you lived and experience and understand mm -hmm. more than someone who was born in 1985 mm -hmm. exactly what apartheid would have been and would have felt like. And so you've lived through the best of both because mm -hmm. you've had 25 years mm -hmm. on the other side and 25 years on the other side. Yes. You know, I never calculated it. Yeah, it's only now that you say that, and it's actually giving me goosebumps because it's so it's so deep. That's yeah. so deep. Yeah, yeah. Because I think sometimes when when a lot of us and and I can see it, younger people sometimes don't understand. You know what did, what was apartheid? What did it mean? And and in in your story, you go into it and 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 you give us a glimpse into it. And I I found that very firstly. You had me researching, and I'll explain you why you had me researching. The first line there is that your grandmother died as a missionary in New York. I was like, we have a black person who went to the U.S. to go and, you know, turn white folk and everybody folk on the other side into... Because, you know, when you think U.S. as well, 
I mean, often the first thing I think of when I think US, I'm, I'm like, you know, white America. Mm -hmm. So especially during that time, because you know they, their struggles have been very similar to ours. Mm -hmm. And so when I read that, I was like, Jesus, how did she end as a missionary? You know. And then the other thing that you mentioned was being on a flight. Mm -hmm. So I went and I looked for old SAA staff members mm -hmm. and I said, tell me, was there ever, did they allow black people on board? Did you guys sell tickets to black people? And she then related a story to me where a black gentleman came through to the airport to purchase a ticket. And this young lady who was new at the job said, uh, sorry, uh, we can't send you a bus ticket. Sorry, we can't send you a flight ticket. Um, you must probably looking for a bus ticket. And everybody, uh, you know, was like, <clears throat> sorry, sir, where would you like to fly to? So what she said to me was that I cannot tell you what the experience would have been like for a black person on the aircraft, but I can tell you that we did sell tickets to black people to be on the aircraft. But it was not ever advertised like come buy a ticket and fly to. So it, it then made me wonder about the kind of person who even ventured. I think my dad was very brave. And it's unfortunate that my dad died at a young age because my dad was a revolutionary. Mm -hmm. And I, I take that from, I get that from both my parents. Um, although I never quite thought of myself as one up until quite recently. Mm -hmm. My my first flight ever was mm -hmm. with my father, mm -hmm. and he was taking me from from Johannesburg to um, PE. Mm -hmm. And I think the airport, and that's how I got to learn. Also, my my dad was a teacher mm -hmm. um, at heart, right? Mm -hmm. Although he was was a brilliant writer. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he, <laughs> when we got to the airport, mm -hmm. and I asked him what, who, because it was called Jan Smarts at the mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. yes, and, it I, was. and I asked him who is Jan Smarts, mm -hmm. and he told me about the Union of South Africa, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. I was five years old mm -hmm. when I got that history lesson. Mm -hmm. And then when we got to PE, and I think PE was called Louis Bosa. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and he then told me about Louis Bosa, mm -hmm. and then he just, and then he said to me, uh, "When you get to PE, you must learn, you must check the encyclopedia because there was no Google." Anymore. Yes, that's the thing. Yes. I think young people don't even realize that we didn't have Google; we had encyclopedia. Yes. yes. <laughs> so the first thing that we did when we got to PE was to go to the encyclopedia and to. Because he told me that there was a golden thread between the two. Like yeah. Both airports were named after generals. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So then I learned about wars and stuff like mm -hmm. that, but you know, a five year old yeah. discovered all that. Yeah. So I remember as a child, um, he then said to me, when you come back, mm -hmm. you'll be coming back on your own. You will be an unaccompanied minor. minor. Yes. yes. And then you now I think it's more sophisticated how you the mm -hmm. children are branded and you mm -hmm. know because I had a little round tag with mm -hmm. pinned onto my chest mm -hmm. to say my name, everything of mine. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And it was S A A and S A L. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that was it. Yeah. But it was comfortable mm -hmm. and I think we were the only black people yeah. on that flight. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, the, the second time that I heard of a, another person, because during the time that I was I was busy with your story, it so happened that I was I was watching um it was just after um Mamu and Nima de Gazella had passed on and um she there were there was a Darcy on the T V about her and it was saying how she was flying to, to to she was flying to Cape Town to go and see uh and um and um it wasn't yeah but basically 
the, the head of justice was on the flight and she went and sat next to him and asked him, when are you letting my husband out? <laughs> you know, and I just thought the audacity of that, you know, the audacity of being brave. I'm saying, well, no time like any, two hours, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to sit next to him and let's have a conversation, my brother. Now, really? yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I found that very interesting. So those were the only two references that I had. I remember oh. you calling me and asking me <laughs> if I, I could remember, like, there, there was some stuff that you wanted to know yeah. about my flights. Yes. And I said to you, and I told you that I, ca I couldn't remember. Yeah. Like, there was some, I can't remember what you were asking me about, but I remember we had a mm -hmm. conversation about the flight yes. and you wanted to know what the experience was blah blah yeah. blah blah and from what i can recall is that it was okay um it, i remember us being the novelty mm -hmm. you know because mm -hmm. here was this man with this little girl mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know and and then oh there was one time when i flew back from mm -hmm. i was flying back to to pe on my own again yes and there was just two girls mm -hmm. two small girls and it was me mm -hmm. and some white girl mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and they made us sit together mm -hmm. you know yeah in kids. A, yeah apartheid south africa yeah. with both with the both of yeah. us had our tent stickers on yes, yeah yes. yeah because i suppose I, I i remember someone mentioning that there was uh, i think it was um raymond ackerman's book that i was reading and he was he was talking about there being a in in Cape Town in Constantia, um, I think it was the Ugandan High Commission or something. The High Commissioner was there. So it and and so if you have people of that caliber and 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 they were given um, honorary status. Oh, so, and about it. Yes. And so basically like honorary white status mm -hmm. it means that you, you get access to the things that everybody else in the country can't get access to, mm -hmm. which I found interesting. So I then asked myself, okay, was this like honorary status? Because I really was trying to grapple with this idea that this whole time we could fly. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yes, yeah. you could. <laughs> I, was yeah. grappling, I was grappling with the towel and I was like, Money, huh? the, the color of money is the same. Yes, that was it. The yeah. color of money. That was my conclusion. Yeah. Later on, and yeah. I was like, oh, okay, they're allowing us to cry because the color of money is it's the green. same. Yes, yeah, yeah. the same. Yeah, and bums and seats are bums yes. and seats. It doesn't matter yes. what kind of bum it is. The bum can get into the yes. seats. Yes. yes, yes. So I found that really like amazing part of the history and, and just also that often when we don't question things, we don't realize what, that it even exists, you know? So if you just stick to this path that you have now been, you know, told that this is your path and you don't question it, then you'll never think of other avenues. Mm -hmm. So I found that very eye-opening, very eye-opening. Mm -hmm. So... Once you've grown, once you've grown up, mm -hmm. did you start doing any sort of travels? Um, what I mean? Can you almost give us a glimpse of past in reflection to new? Okay, so because I, I was a young mother, mm -hmm. I never got um, a chance to like there wasn't much traveling that I could do because I had a child to take care of, and. Um, but um, later on, when my child started growing up, and you know, um, I I let loose. I travel. I started mm -hmm. traveling, but mm -hmm. within you know, um, South Africa. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but is traveling different from when I was growing up to now traveling? In definitely, I mean, times have changed. Mm -hmm. Things are a whole lot more different. Mm -hmm. I think opportunity, there are so much, so many opportunities mm -hmm. for us now. Yeah. When I was growing up, I mean, we didn't have the conversation.